This show is clean. These are uncomfortable. Pretty much. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 750. Hi, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcast Grove Valley, California. Today we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster. Plus, it's part three of my into an interview with the singer-songwriter from the state of Washington, Kai Alfred Hillig. And Google is testing something that, oh, might make some people nervous. Mike's Daily Podcast. We'll find out about that story and also about people who are oblivious. Mike's Daily Podcast. Because they're so wrapped up in their own little worlds, in their feeble little minds. On yesterday's show, John Deere, the engineer, said something that was a crime. He said he wanted to put up Abercrombie and Fitch Ab Art. And then I saw that Ab Art made me fall apart because my abs will never Mike's Daily Podcast. look like those that you see on the walls of Abercrombie and Fitch places. That's just what I found Mike's to be true. Daily So Podcast Back in the Yeah! early 90s i started working at a country station and i worked there a couple of years by the late 90s i had been there a long time and made sort of a name for myself in ventura county look who just walked in hi mark it's benita the rodeo queen how y'all doing and it's a disgruntled fiddle player tell you what what i remember those days you hosted a show called the santa fe cafe and i was on it that's right that's where you got your start And I did the show for 11 years. During that time, in the late 90s, there was a woman that worked at the radio station that I began a relationship with. Well, she broke it off with me. I was upset. Every night, I had to do a show. I had to come up with a creative topic. And... Well, I was going through a breakup, so I decided I will ask a bunch of breakup questions. Why the hell not? It's my show. And people like it when you share a little bit of yourself. And it was a country music station. We were playing country music. 90% of country music songs are about breakups. So it, it fit. It fit. Until one day, this said person, this woman who broke up with me, calls me up leaves a message on my answering machine which i kept on cassette for many years and then disposed of it when i got married not to her let's make that clear and yes i am divorced uh but uh, the the divorce was much more amicable than the breakup with this woman that i had worked with and it didn't great she said how dare you talk about us on the air how dare you discuss us And I thought that was very funny because I never knew that she even listened to my show because she was so full of herself and only listened to her own show and then cheated on me with all kinds of men that she met. What? Yes, it was a sad tale. Mark, I don't think I expected you to go that far into detail. Um, At any rate, I have been uh, in a relationship for two months and it has broken up. It's done. And I am, I have to say, I have this thing where, and I, I've discussed this on the show before, where if you do something to me that's very upsetting, and let's just say you uh, leave me a message or you, or you text me, I will not respond to that m- message, that voicemail or that text if you have really upset me. And if you're, unless you send me like a basket of fruit or a bouquet of flowers, which I have not yet ever gotten in my life. Let's hear it for a bouquet of flowers. Thank you, studio audience. If I do not get either of those things, I will not respond to you. You do not deserve it. You have screwed me over. Nobody likes to be screwed over. But I take it particularly hard because I am a nice guy. You may not know me personally, or maybe you do, but everybody I know has said to me and has to tell me over and over again, Mike, you're too nice. Mike, you're too nice. 
It's true. I am too nice. I let people walk all over me, and people take advantage of that. And so when I get screwed over, there is a part of me in the, the survival mode, way in the back of my head, a uh, collaboration of all those people who have warned me that I allow people to walk on me that says, Mike, don't even respond. They don't deserve it. So I did not respond to this last person who I had this last relationship with because she was being mean to me and she was treating me badly and she gave me every excuse under the sun. But in the end, I said enough's enough and I just did not respond. So I get this text from her. She uses Facebook and she messages me and gives me this long rant and I knew it was coming. I knew this, this is what happens. This is what someone will eventually do when the other person's giving the other person the cold shoulder. And it just reminded me of that relationship that ended in the early 90s with the fellow DJ who left that uh, vicious, uh, fiery message on my answering machine years ago. Only this was in text form and I got to read it. And I thought about it. And every time I thought about what she said in the text, little things would pop up in my head would be like, you know, this person doesn't give a sh about anyone else other than herself. But Mike, how can you say that on your podcast? Don't you think she'll listen to it? Are you kidding me? She never listened to my podcast. In fact, whenever I tried to talk about my podcast with her, her eyes would glaze over and she would kind of just go, uh-huh. Like I had just talked about maybe like, oh, you know, I have uh, gotten in touch with UFOs. Oh, that's nice, dear. I've just invented a machine that runs on perpetual motion. That's nice, dear. That's fine. Just glazed over. Didn't even care. Didn't engage me. Anything she said. Of course, I was like, really? You know, I was interested. And she talked at length about all the things going on in her life. At any rate, it's over with. And now I hate Priuses. Or Pri. You people that say Pri. Ugh. That's such bullshit. And that is the last time I'm ever using OkCupid or any of those internet internet dating services ever again. That's it. I'm done. Good for you, Mike. You know what? That stuff is crazy. I'm at the disgruntled fiddle player at a farmer's market. It's true. I was playing the fiddle at the farmer's market, and she came up to me and said, You play so lovely. And then we dated. That's not how it happened. No. How did it happen? You were, like, stalking me. Why would I be stalking you at a farmer's market? Because y'all had the broccoli stalks. Yeah, I like the broccoli stalks. They got all the vitamins in them. You know, the British like to say vitamins. Well, they're strange. The Colts just walked in. Hello there, Mike. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Brewmaster, what root beer did you make today? Mike, I made a delicious consolation because your relationship has ended a root beer. Wonderful. Oh, it tastes bitter. Bittersweet. Yeah, I know. Isn't it great? So Google is now flying drones, airborne drones, capable of flying on their own and delivering anything from candy to medicine. Wasn't Amazon going to do that? Have they beat Amazon? Yes, they announced yesterday that they are doing this. They call it Project Wing, and it marks the company's latest expansion beyond its web-based origins. Could help Google break into the lucrative markets such as commerce and package delivery, ratcheting up the competition with Amazon, making them very nervous. Google, the world's largest internet search engine, said it will take years of development to create a service with multiple vehicles flying multiple deliveries per day. This according to Reuters. An early version of the drone, which Google showcased in a video on its website, has a 1.5 meter wide wingspan, which is about a yard. For those of you who want the conversion done for you right now. And is capable of flying pre-programmed routes. Google said that these planes have much more in common with Google's self-driving cars than the remote-controlled airplanes people fly on the weekends. 
While Google has been quietly developing its aerial drone project since late 2011, the company will now focus on teaching the vehicles to safely navigate around each other to reduce the noise of the vehicles and to refine the delivery capability such that a package can be delivered to a spot the size of a doorstep. And in 2012... Congress required the FAA to establish a roadmap for the broader use of drones. The FAA has allowed limited use of drones in the U.S. for surveillance, law enforcement, atmospheric research, and other applications. What do you think about that? What do you think about drones delivering things, drones flying up and down your street? Are you excited about it? Are you scared and terrified of it? Do you love it when people get you all mad and you give them the cold shoulder and then they text you with some stupid crap? Do you love ab art? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Check out the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. It's got links to where to listen to the show in iTunes. Subscribe to the show in iTunes. You can rate and comment on the show and that helps our ranking it helps more people find out about us if you do that there's also a link to where to find us on facebook like the facebook page when i post a new show share that with your friends and more people find out about us that way another great way to support the show would be the amazon deal of the day oops sorry google they're 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 at each other's throats and i've just given amazon a, a free plug well the amazon deal of the day if you click on that and get a great discount on whatever it is they got that helps us out a little bit too there's also links to where to find us on youtube soundcloud stitcher speaker mixcloud podomatic yelp tumblr twitter and there is the blog the daily podcast picture and all my past interviews are right there at mike's daily podcast.com into an interview sure i'm talking to kai alfred hillig He's got a new album out called The Buddhist, and he has it uh, in digital form on his band camp, and it'll be yeah. out on CD September 9th, and he's doing a payola campaign to get the vinyl put together to make a, a nice vinyl record of this album, The Buddhist, and go to payola.fm to help him out with that. And hello, Kai. I was going to ask you, uh, this question is labeled BG. How do you mend a broken heart? How do you mend a broken heart? I, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I think with all that kind of stuff, uh, not to be too sappy or whatever, but um, I think you got to do something constructive with it, you know? Uh, I, don't, I think if you, if you sit around, you just kind of... Uh, you kind of just flounder in it a bit. Uh, I don't. I think if you want to want to get things mended, want to get things back online, I think you gotta. You know, I don't know. Make a painting. Go talk to friends. Start boxing. I don't know. Do something <laughs> with it. <laughs> and that's the uh, album we were talking about yesterday, "Real Snow." That was you mending a broken heart with that album. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was kind of partly the that, and I think it was also. Um, just you know it felt like something to do with you know I, I felt really angry i think as a lot of people do when they're going through that stuff mm-hmm. you feel kind of angry and uh, i think it was me just uh trying to feel less angry and you took uh some creative writing classes didn't you in school i did yeah well i after a couple years back i got really into um uh writing fiction i actually wrote like about three novels um a handful of years back and uh, I, I just wrote all day, every day. That's all I did uh, outside of, of uh, you know, going to work and so forth. And um, I, I took a literary fiction uh, course at uh, the UW. I got a uh, certificate in uh, literary fiction from University of Washington. Wow. You just, you're so creative. And it's like you don't let anything stop you. It's amazing. Well, you know, I figure, you know, one of these days I'll, I'll, you know, get run over by a train or wake up dead or something. So uh, might as well, you know, no time to like the present, you know, if I, you know, if you want to do something, why not just do it? I always thought that was an interesting phrase, wake up dead. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) How are you waking up then? Is the... I don't know. Who, uh, who knows? I don't. I don't know what uh, what lays beyond. So uh, you know, just a figure of speech more than anything. And you've tapped that subject in your because you worked. Didn't you work at a morgue? Uh, yeah, actually, I currently work at a funeral. Oh, funeral home. I, I that's what I that's what I do for for uh, funding right now. 